Mass, energy, and time. This circle represents the movement of a single photon. If this photon still moving at 186,000 miles a second maintains a closed orbit and then overlaps part of its own frequency, it would remain bonded to itself. It's the same thing as what happened a long time ago with the long door springs we used to have, that if you would form these door springs into a circle and push the ends sideways into each other, they would remain bonded. There has to be a way for electromagnetic energy to remain bonded to itself in order to form into an electron. This represents an electron. In the northern part you have amplitude, in the southern part you have frequency modulation. Amplitude modulation, frequency modulation. As the frequency increases, the amplitude is able to increase. It has an electric equator through it. There are four spin states, one vertical, two to your left, and one to the right. These are found in the four subshells of electron, SPDF. This being formed of electromagnetic energy, the, ener the energy is moving at the same speed, that of light, but it is bonded to itself in such a manner that it becomes three-dimensional instead of one-dimensional. And the electromagnetic properties are found in the electric equator, the magnetic northern region, the mass of the southern region, which would be that which offers resistance to movement. I'd like to speak for a moment about the physics trilogy. E equals MC2. E is found in red and it is found in joules here. Mass is one kilogram. The C2 is light times itself in speed. The speed of light is not an arbitrary number. This number represents energy, a particular kind of energy. It appears to be that of Planck's constant. Then we go to mass. Here the mass in green, one kilogram. Energy is in joules. C2 is found in light times itself being multiplied. The C2 value of mass, notice it is, energy is divided by this. In energy, it is multiplied by that. In either of these, it is the basis of the equation. C2 determines reality. It is what we are composed of. We are all composed of physical time. It is because we are composed of this, as well as everything in our universe, that the present moves into the past at the same speed everywhere. There is nothing in our universe that has a different time value of moving from present into the past. That was the second part of the trilogy. The third part is that of C2 itself. This is a field of gravity. It is also a field of time. That is what, what uh, the force of gravity is. Is it a field of time? It is a particular velocity that has an energy value to it. Again, it appears that of H. C2 equals E divided by M. E is the heat energy within the mass. If there is no energy within the mass, no heat energy, there would be no C2 value. If this value is increased, this one increases. If this M represented Earth, the mass of our planet, and there was no heat energy, M would stand alone. There would be no gravitational field. At this address, http yahoocom notarc there is a, a short writing called Concepts Concerning Gravity, Time, and Energy that des describe this a little bit further.
In speaking about mass and energy together, I would like to speak of something that is rather unusual, and you wouldn't expect to find it. It is why Earth has a magnetic field. Here's our north, of course, of course, Earth, the northern hemisphere moving to the right, the southern one also. Notice that there is a uh, change in speed, zero at the poles, and the speed of mass increases toward the equator. It is because of this increase of motion that the Coriolis effect forms. It, it, it universally forms throughout the mass of our planet. The reason for this force forming is found here. We have the mass moving to the right on both hemispheres. Energy is moving with mass in the northern one, but in the southern hemisphere it doesn't move in the same direction. This energy causes resistance to the mass because it's moving opposite to the mass. And it causes a 25 foot rise in mass along the equator in the southern hemisphere that's not found in the northern one. It's like putting your hand in moving water and the water builds up behind it because your hand offers resistance to the water. The reason that the Coriolis force forms is found in this concept. If this were our planet and we're divided in half through the equator, and you were to turn those halves so both of them faced your direction, and were you to mark the direction of spin of mass, you would find that the, uh, the mass spin is the same, but the energy spin is opposite. In other words, if you took this and flopped it right over on the north hemisphere, and this uh, red represented the movement of the mass, these arrows would be moving in the same direction. But you'll notice that the face of one hemisphere is opposite that of the other. The southern hemisphere has to move in a direction opposite to that of the north in order for it to be moving in the same direction, as contrary as that may sound. So here we have an example of, of mass and energy moving in a way that you wouldn't expect, but it is this concept that forms the Coriolis force. I would like to speak quickly about the movement of mass and speaking about unusual properties of it. We're going to take an overhead view of a look at mass as it moves. This is going to be at 100% at rest. See these lines of frequency? They're the same and at right angles to the direction. If this is north, and this will be the direction we'll be moving. Notice that these lines of frequency are the same as these. As the mass begins to move, and we look at the overhead condition, notice the mass starts to shrink. And this, this dark line would be the mass moving. And um, the, the lines of energy or the frequency begins becoming condensed in the direction of travel. And not only that, the ones at right angles, they, they no longer have the same amplitude. So they are becoming stretched out more. And let's look at another one. If we have a uh, condition where energy throughout the entire mass is able to move at 46,000 miles a second, the speed of light is 186,000. Notice how these lines become condensed even more, and this is becoming more toward a straight line. Then if we were to check the same mass moving at the speed of light minus two feet per second, energy in any direction could only move two feet in one second. And this little black line that would represent the mass would actually be invisible, even if it were a spaceship, because all of its frequency would have been moving in one direction. At the speed of light, that, that energy would convert totally into electromagnetic energy and there would be no movement at right angles to direction of travel. And let's look at it further in the form of graph, why this works like that. 